Welcome to Over It and On With It. I'm your host, Christine Hassler, and for over a decade, I've been a life coach, speaker, and author. Each week, you'll hear me work directly with a caller as I coach them through a goal they want to accomplish or an obstacle they may be facing. I'll provide a blend of practical and spiritual advice as well as tangible actions you can apply to your own life. Now, let's get on with the episode. Welcome back to the show, everybody. I don't know if you saw the news last week. I posted on social media that we hit 100,000 downloads in just four months. That is so awesome. I wish there was a camera on me because you'd see me smiling. It was really cool to hit that number, and I'm just so glad that the show is resonating with you and serving you, and And I love doing it, and I will keep doing it as, as long as you keep listening. So I, I don't just take credit for the 100,000 downloads. It's because of all of you. I couldn't do this if you weren't listening. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So today's show is about a lot, but mostly it's about moving from being a human doing back to being a human being. A while ago, a good friend said to me that I'm not the first person she calls when she needs support because I was always so busy and when she'd call, she wouldn't get an answer. Ouch. And when she said it, I felt the sting, and she wasn't saying it with any ill intent at all. And the truth is, it was true. Between speaking and leading retreats and my clients and running my business and all the other things that I do, I was very, very, very busy for a couple of reasons. One, I thought I needed to be busy to be successful. You know, I thought that the more that I did, the more I could do, the more successful I would be. And two, I I loved everything I was doing so much that I kind of lost sight of how much space in my calendar I didn't have and how I needed to have that space to make room for the non-doing things in my life. So the past year has really been about creating more white space for me. I even took two retreats off my calendar. I usually take people to Tulum and Costa Rica and I, I canceled both because I wanted to be less busy. So being more present, having more space has been a priority for me, and I hope it is for you too. You see, I feel like in this fast-paced culture we live in, we wear busyness like a badge of honor. People ask you how you're doing. Oh, I'm so busy. Life is so busy. I have so much to do. But being busy is not a badge of honor, and it's definitely not the way to feel fulfillment. Many people lead busy lives yet never feel it's enough. You know, they reach one goal and then what's the next? Enough is never enough. A busy life is not necessarily a full and fulfilled life. And also keeping busy is a distraction from dealing with issues or feelings that are actually blocking access to what you really want. I see this so much when people have expectation hangovers. Instead of feeling the feelings and dealing with the disappointment and healing the issues that are being triggered, they just distract themselves by being busy so they don't have to feel. So my encouragement to you is to consider whether your busyness is actually detouring you from the path to true fulfillment. Take time to just be, to allow yourself to feel, to know you are enough without doing so much. And that's exactly what I encourage today's caller, Golson, to start looking at. She's frustrated at her lack of motivation at home, but in a way, it's alerting her to how much she needs to be less of a human doing and more of a human being. So if you bounce between feeling stressed all the time and constantly overwhelmed and busy, busy, busy and frazzled to then feeling burnt out with no motivation to do certain things in your life, you'll relate to today's call. You see, when we're so over busy in our life, some part of us will rebel in another aspect of our life to try to establish equilibrium inside ourselves. For instance, if you're super busy at work and putting a ton of hours and effort in, you may rebel by not taking the time to eat healthy or take care of your body because you just don't have enough gas left in your tank. But we must, must, must take time to slow down, stop, refuel, and balance. You know, balance doesn't come from catching up on sleep on the weekends or doing one meditation on a Sunday. These are things we have to implement into our daily life and our daily routine so that we don't get lost in the busyness of life and miss out on really what matters most. So consider, are you addicted to busyness? Do you wear it like a badge of honor? 
when people ask you, how's life? Is your response, oh, it's just so busy. Great, but just so busy. Do you have trouble just being because you feel like you quote unquote should be doing something and or you don't want to have to face the feelings that busyness distracts you from? Do you notice yourself super efficient and on it in some aspects of your life, but others where you just rebel, give up, and have zero motivation? And finally, does your self-worth have to do with doing? So make sure to listen to the end of this episode because I'm also going to take you through a guided meditation to help you just be. And before we get to the call, I want to thank my sponsor for this episode of Over and On With It, which is On It. Actually, one of my favorite products from them, Alpha Brain, has helped me to be less busy because it's helped me be more focused and efficient. Alpha Brain is a supplement used to enhance memory, focus, and processing speeds. So I take it when I need to be super focused and get a lot done and perform at my best, but not have to spend so much time doing it so I have more white space for other things. On it is one of my favorite wellness companies because they're focused on inspiring peak performance through very unique products. They have all kinds of supplements and gear and even really cute clothes. So find out more at onit.com slash Christine. And if you go through that link, you'll also get a 10% discount added to any order. Again, it's onit.com slash Christine. And now let's get on to my session with Golson. Hi, Gulson. Welcome to the show. I love your beautiful name from Turkey. <laughs> What's your question? Hi, Christine. My question is about how I feel at home. I am generally a very curious and full of life person. I feel like I have energy to do so many things. But usually what happens is when I come home, I feel like almost something takes over and I have no interest or energy to do anything and everything becomes like a chore and I usually fight with myself which makes me feel horrible about myself. How long has this been going on? A couple of years I would say. Okay. And does it tie into any change in your life, you know, a relationship, a move, a job change? Is there any correlation to an external event happening that this started to shift inside of you? Uh, not really, because I've been going through this. I've been feeling this way for a long time, and it's been happening when I was in a different job, when I was experimenting with a different career, when I was living in a different city. So it's been going on for a long time. Okay. But when you're out in the world working or whatever, you feel productive and curious. You don't You don't have this feeling. Is that accurate? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Got it. Usually when there's uh, another person involved or there's an outside accountability, I don't feel like it because the responsibility, sense of responsibility in me, I guess, takes over. And I'm like, oh, I have to do this. Like, I don't have time to or I don't have a choice to be, you know, uh, bored, to not want to do it. Right. You know, there's a deadline. There's a person that I'm responding to and I do it. But otherwise, even if I'm super interested in doing something. It's like I'm home and then it's almost over. Right. Okay. I get it. Here's the thing with how kind of we operate is that all of us have, when our relationship with self is out of balance, we have a rebeller or saboteur that comes out and you have a kind of a mix of a rebeller and a saboteur. You know, kind of, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do anything. That's why you're rebelling. It, it's it's like the five-year-old who doesn't want to brush his teeth in the morning before school. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, no, I'm not doing that. Even though brushing his teeth is good for him and not that hard, right? And then mm-hmm. it's kind yeah. of like the saboteur too of of not working on things that you're excited about. So to me, the reason this is happening, and this is just sort of intuitively what I'm feeling, and you'll have to tell me if this resonates, is... It seems like your core way to kind of motivate yourself and get things done is to be a little hard on yourself, is to push yourself a bit. And it doesn't seem like there's a lot of self-acknowledgement and self-love that's happening in your life. And so there's a part of you that's just exhausted. There's a part of you that just wants to know that she's enough just as she is, that she doesn't have to do anything, she doesn't have to perform, she doesn't have to be active, that she's just enough as she is. And 
it doesn't seem like you're tending to that part. It seems like your self-acknowledgement and self-acceptance is a little low. And so at home, when there's less distractions and no one to be accountable for, that's when that part rebels. To me, it's serving you like this rebeller and this kind of saboteur is serving you because it's getting your attention. And it's like, hey, Golson, like, hey, like, this is the time where I need you to be kind to me and be gentle and to re-nourish and replenish and focus inward. Is this making sense to you? Uh, yes, I'm in tears right now. <laughs> it's like you're just describing me. Yeah. 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 So how amazing that you have this rebellion part that when you're at home isn't going to let you distract yourself because you're distracting yourself a lot. Like curiosity and being busy and being involved is a great thing, but we have to be mindful of when it crosses over into being a coping mechanism and being a distracting device. And it's so important to be in silence and be in stillness and sit and just sit with ourselves and allow whatever feelings to come up just like right now. You know, just like right now, when these tears are coming up, this is a prime example of because you were listening to me and you were present, it's like that kind of judgy, I have to do, do, do voice went away and you had a moment of stillness and it's like those feelings that you've been working so hard to keep down got a chance to be expressed. And so that's what, that's what's called for right now. Like I would love for you at home to start to set up an altar and set up a sacred space in your home and to have a little sanctuary where you go to, where you just sit in stillness and you be, and you let whatever feelings come up and you start to reconnect to that place inside of you that doesn't need you to quote unquote do anything. Um, it sounds great, but, uh, something in me is like saying like, like, how do you be actually? Mm-hmm. How do you not do anything and feel good about yourself? You're doing it right now. <laughs> Have you ever been around a baby or a small child? Yes. Mm-hmm. And when you're around like a very young, a very young baby, how do you feel? Peaceful. Mm-hmm. Is that baby doing anything? Is it entertaining you? Is it telling you jokes? Is it asking you interesting questions? Is it no. achieving things? No. no. It's not even controlling its own bodily functions. <laughs> you know, like it's not <laughs> quote unquote doing anything. It's just being. I, I understand this this metaphor. Again, the same voice is like, um, I'm an adult. I have my own daughter and I I can't solve this puzzle where it's like you have responsibilities, you have so many things to catch up. You, you, it's like you can't do that. Like you don't have that luxury. Let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Do you think that an athlete that's training for the Olympics does better if they train every day all the time? Or if they actually take breaks to rest and recover? Oh, the the later one. Right. So Mm -hmm. I know this is sort of a mind bend for you and you're not going to experience the difference until you start doing it. But you've got Mm -hmm. to trust the being because in the being is when we refill and refuel. And here's the thing. You're already saying when you're at home you're not doing, and then you're Mm -hmm. criticizing yourself. And that's Mm -hmm. because your tank is empty and you're not acknowledging yourself for just who you are, just for how amazing you are, independent of anything you've ever done. Please don't underestimate the power of stillness. That's the time when we reconnect, we refuel. And here's the thing. You said you have a daughter. You do not Mm -hmm. want to teach her that her worth and her value comes from doing. You do not want to teach Mm -hmm. her that. So this is going to take a strong commitment from you because how we change things is we change thoughts and we change behavior. Okay. So part of you has to be willing to consider, willing to consider that being is empowering 
and actually is something because being is truly how we grow the most and how we connect most deeply to who we are. And then you have to take the action step of actually setting time in your life to just be and being very mindful of the thought that comes in and the critic that comes in and the pusher that comes in and says, oh, you should be doing something and go, no, no, no. I forgive myself for buying into that misunderstanding. It's okay to just be. I was just going to ask on a, like on a tangent note, how does that not become a chore or like a, another to do on my ever running list? Does spending time with your daughter and cuddling and playing with her feel like a to do? No. Why? Because it fills me up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So at first it might feel like a little bit of a to-do, but Mm -hmm. over time it's going to feel like breathing. It's going to feel like spending time with your daughter. It's going to feel so fulfilling because you're going to notice that that rebel and that saboteur starts to go away. So here's what I suggest. I suggest a 40-day practice where you set up a little meditation space And every day for 10 days, you sit, you put one hand on your heart, one hand on your lower belly. I I love people to do that because it just connects to our heart and it connects to our second and third chakra, which is where we feel really safe. And you can use guided meditations. You can put some music on or you can just listen to your breath. And I want you to connect to that love you feel for your daughter and then turn that love on you. Like really fill yourself with your own self-love. And do this every day for 40 days. And when, when a thought comes in of I'm not doing enough, I'm not doing enough, you, you don't say, oh, I shouldn't think that because then you're just criticizing the critic. You say, I forgive myself for thinking that. It's just a thought. I'm coming back to the present. I'm coming back to the breath. And I want you to do this every day for 40 days and then reach out to me again and let's see how this shifts. But just know that rebel that isn't quote unquote doing is serving you right now. It's asking you to pay attention to a different way of being. Okay. Okay. I will definitely, definitely do that. Awesome. And we'll check back in 40 days and see how you're doing. Okay. All right. Sounds great. So I just want to talk a bit about why I coached Golson the way that I did. If you listen to the show for a while, you've probably heard a lot of episodes where I take people back and I help them try to uncover maybe something from their childhood or something from their past that's impacting how they're feeling, you know, some kind of unresolved issue. And the reason I didn't with her is because I could sense that she was very much in her head and very logical and very analytical. So I didn't really want to get into a relationship with her where we were digging in her past and analyzing What I wanted to do instead was support her in moving forward and really establishing a practice where she could just be. Because before, you know, you can even deal with some of your issues, you have to be comfortable enough with yourself just to be. So since she was a very intelligent person, trying to get anywhere with her head was just not the way to go. It was really about helping her set up behaviors that would move her in the direction she wanted to go. So I hope that's helpful for you coaches and practitioners out there and also for those of you who are very logical and like to analyze and are in your head that maybe it's time to spend a little less time figuring it out and more time establishing practices and behaviors that move you in the direction that you want to go. It's really tricky for super intelligent people to just be, but it's super, super important. All right, so let me break down a little bit more of the call. So one thing that Golson mentioned is that when she's accountable to others, when she has an appointment or work or she's working with other people, she shows up, she has plenty of motivation. But when it comes to herself, not so much. And that kind of ties back to what I was saying before I played the call for you. You know, when we feel out of balance in one area of our life, like overworked in one area, we will rebel in another. It also has to do with accountability and integrity. When we're showing up for others, and we have someone to be accountable to, it's like we make them more important than being accountable to ourselves. But integrity, newsflash, starts with an I, 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 I. I have to be an integrity with myself first. That's more important than being an integrity with others. 
Because if we don't keep our word with ourselves, then down the road, it's even harder to keep our word with others. Next, we have to stop motivating ourselves by pushing ourselves. Oh, being hard on yourself is the worst way to motivate yourself. Please, please, please just stop it. Inspire yourself instead through self-acknowledgement, self-honoring choices, and self-love. Know you are enough just as you are. There's nothing you need to do to be worthy. And really look at how busyness is a distraction and how it's not fulfilling. How can you just be? And what are your excuses that keep you from it? You know, one of the excuses Golson used, and I can relate to this a lot because I hear a lot of other mothers use it, is I'm a mom. I have too many responsibilities. There's too much to do. And I have mad respect for all the mothers out there, and I know you do so much. But if you can't find one minute in the morning to meditate and check in, an extra minute in the shower, set your timer for five minutes and pull over in your car and listen to a beautiful song or just let things be quiet, carve out time with your girlfriends, spend 10 minutes and maybe read a book or look at a magazine. You can find the time. It's just about being intentional with it. And it's not so much that it has to be tons of time, because I know moms don't have a lot of white spaces in their life, or parents in general, but there can be that space if you're intentional about it. So this is me giving you a permission slip to make self-honoring choices, to just be, to do things for you. It is not selfish. It is self-honoring. And also for the parents out there, you don't want to be teaching your kids that running around busy and stressed out is the way to success. Don't you want to be modeling something else for them? And even those of you without kids, do you want to keep reinforcing the limiting belief that busyness is the path to success and fulfillment? Because it's not. All right. So I promise I take you into a meditation. I'm going to do that at the end. A few assignments for you. First, Take a life inventory. Where are you just busy for no reason? Where can you create space and be less busy? Second, forgive yourself for buying to the misunderstanding that busyness is making you successful or that if you're not achieving, you're not quote unquote doing anything and you're not worthy. Spending time doing nothing is not a waste of time. And by nothing, I don't mean mindlessly surfing on Facebook That's not what I mean. I mean taking time to connect with yourself, to connect with your higher power, to spend time with a friend, to take a walk in nature. Those are the non-outcome-based activities I invite you to participate in more. And finally, commit to a 40-day practice of some kind of presencing or meditation. This is what I also recommended to Golson. I suggested to her to do 10 minutes a day for 40 days. Maybe your practice is five minutes or three minutes. The most important thing is that you do it every day for 40 days and to support you and to maybe kick you off in your 40 day practice. I'm going to end today's podcast by taking you through a guided meditation and supporting you and just being. So put one hand on your heart. That's your connection to unconditional love. That's also the doorway to the divine. And one hand on your lower belly. That's your connection to your second and third chakra all about your relationship with yourself, your safety, your security. So with one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly, just feel that connection to yourself and take a nice deep breath in. And let go with a sigh. And take another nice deep breath in. And let it go. And one more nice deep breath. And let it go. Good. And as you're breathing, I just want you to bring all of your awareness to your breath. Hear your breath. Feel your breath. Each inhale and each exhale. Good, and I want you to imagine that you have a volume knob in your mind. 
could be a knob or a dial or a push screen, whatever you see. Just something to visualize controlling the volume from 1 to 10. And imagine that that volume represents your mind noise, your mental chatter, everything swirling around in your head. Just evaluate on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the noisiest, the loudest. What is the volume of your thoughts right now? For a lot of us, it's at a 9 or a 10, so just see that number. And then as you breathe, I want you to visualize turning the volume dial down. So start to see it go from a 10 to a 9. Breath getting louder, thoughts getting stiller, 8, 7, 6, keep breathing, connecting to your breath, your body, letting your nervous system calm and quiet, 5, Four, softening your eyelids, softening your eyebrows, softening your jaw. And four, three, two, feeling your breath, one, and zero. Quiet, still, nowhere to be, nothing to do, nowhere to go. And just for a minute, just rest in the stillness, in the quiet. And if you find your mind has drifted off, just bring it back to your breath. Take one more nice deep inhale. Feel your hand on your heart and on your belly and then just sigh it out again. Wiggling your fingers and your toes, coming back into the present moment. And just remembering you are a human being. You don't have to do so much. Trust in the process of being, and that will lead you to the most fulfillment. Sending you so much love and light. Until next week. Thank you for listening to Over It Non With It. I love hearing from you, so please post your comments or questions at christinehasler.com slash podcast. That's also the place you can sign up to receive coaching from me in an upcoming episode. And if you love this show, please share it and subscribe on iTunes. You can find all my social media handles and sign up to be part of my community at christinehasler.com. Until next week, here's to getting over it and on with it. Much love and many blessings. 